Hi there. This week we are going to work on lab 8, acids, bases, and buffers. Um, you may have covered this in lecture already or you might be getting to it, um, but I hope it'll help you understand especially buffers. Um, so a couple of things in the background here that I want to draw your attention to. Um, we will be using in this experiment indicators and those are chemicals that change colors at various pHs. Um, we'll be using red cabbage indicator which you get by just boiling um, cabbage. Um, and then there's also a variety of indicators in the pH paper. Um, that's just a little bit less messy than having um, a liquid indicator. So we're going to be focusing mainly on buffers in this experiment. Um, and buffers are used to maintain our blood pH in this really tight range. So a buffer has to have two ingredients, a weak acid, and its conjugate base, and those two help a buffer resist changes in pH when you add acid or base. Um, so this is the main buffer um, system that's in our blood. The system would include all the reactants and all the products. Um, we're not going to study that buffer today. We're going to study a different buffer, um, and that buffer that we're going to study is this one here. So this is my weak acid and this over here is what we call its conjugate base. I can tell this is an acid because it has this COOH group, specifically that H is the H proton that gets donated, um, and this is a base because it looks exactly like the acid but it's lost a proton, lost an H. So it's ready to accept an H and that's what makes it a base. So we're going to look at um, these two chemicals, two ingredients, that make up a buffer and are able to resist pH changes. So in terms of the questions we're going to look at today, we're going to skip this first one um, and we will instead just be focusing on this buffer. So next page over, I already collected all the equipment, um, was very safe while I handled it, and we are going to skip part A um, due to the difficulty of doing labs, um, but we're going to jump right to part B that you'll see in the video um, where we add an acid and base to water, something that is not a buffer. So in other words, it has no weak acid and conjugate base in it. Um, so you're going to see some indicator. This RCI is an indicator um, that will be put into water and then we're going to add some acid to that. On the next page over, you'll see we continue. We will add um, some base to that water, and then we'll play around with reversing that change. So you want to keep an eye on the colors and the chemicals that are added here. And then in part C, um, which is where we'll spend most of our time focusing, part C, um, we're going to have a buffer solution. And so that's going to be some water, but also with the weak acid and the conjugate base. So you'll observe um, all of these steps being taken. And then if we look at the bottom here, normally you would design your own little experiment, but we're going to skip that today. So continuing on to page 47, um, remember that we are not doing part A, so that means this whole page um, you don't need to do. The first page that you'll be scanning and uploading um, will be this page, page 48. So make sure that up in the corner you put your name and if you worked with a partner, Make sure you're each turning in your own unique work, but make sure both of your names are there. So in part B, you're going to see three different beakers, one with um, water in it and indicator, one with indicator and acid, and one with indicator and base. Um, this color here will be the color of the solution. And this pH, you will use the pH paper that you can see in the picture with a little jar of pH paper and there's some colors on the lid. Um, so you want to read, you want to put a number in here. So you want to say it's a pH of about five or six. It'll be a little bit difficult to see, um, but hopefully you can take a good guess at that. So what color is this and then what is the pH? For example, with the water, um, the indicator ends up being like a pale pink, I think and the pH is right around 7, so that's how you would fill that in. Make sure that you observe the color changes in um, B4 when you add extra HCl and sodium hydroxide. So moving on down to the buffer solution then, 
we want to think a little bit about the chemical reactions that are happening there. Um, so we're going to add an acid and a base now, not just to water like we did above, but to a buffer solution. So a buffer needs two ingredients. It needs a weak acid, and in our case that will be um, acetic acid is what we're looking at here. This is the same as vinegar at home. And then it's conjugate base, which will be CH3COO-. Um, and these are related by this chemical equation. So this whole entire thing, I would say, is the buffer system. And you might notice that this is an equilibrium reaction. As you can see by the double arrows here, um, that allows it to um, adjust in either direction, depending on what stresses your body puts on it. So all of this data um, here, you're going to collect from watching the video. Again, here we want the color of the indicator or of the solution. So that might be a pale pink here. And the pH, um, I think you'll see is right around three to four. So a number here and a color here. Um, so you'll take those observations, but I want you to um, think here about what's happening in the buffer. So when any acid, H+, plus, or we could substitute for H+, plus, H3O+, because those are used interchangeably, um, we want to think about what's going to neutralize an acid that's added. So um, opposites neutralize each other. So if I have an acid, it's going to get neutralized by the conjugate base, and that's what keeps the pH relatively stable, not shooting up, um, but relatively stable. So that H plus um, would add to our conjugate base that we identified up here. And when those two combine, this positive is going to connect right here at the negative. So my conjugate base turns into a weak acid, and now it's not a strong acid anymore. Similarly, when I add a base, then my weak acid is going to neutralize it. And so that's going to be this. When those neutralize, or those combine, um, this OH is going to react with that H. And so I get CH3COO minus because I lose an H plus. And then H plus and OH minus give me water. So I take a base and I turn it into a weak base. I take an acid and I turn it into a weak acid. And this set of products keeps the pH very stable, not extreme like an acid or a base would. So on the next page, we'll look at a different way to visualize this, and then you'll be ready to think about your reaction. So in part C, um, we're going to illustrate, or we're going to have this beaker with the buffer in it. You can see the weak acid here and the conjugate base. Um, this, again, will probably be some kind of pale pink and a pH of around 3 to 4 when you measure that. Um, check if that's correct when you watch the video. So when I add H plus to this, we want to think back to the last um, page we were looking at. H plus is going to be an acid that reacts with my conjugate base. So that acid will go in and protonate, we say, or add protons onto some of these bases. So the other acids, these ones here, will just sit there untouched. Acids can't neutralize acids. But my weak base is going to fall out of the beaker here a little bit. Say I add two protons. Oh, those two protons, those H's here, will get picked up and neutralized by what was a weak base up here. So I end up adding protons and they turn my weak base into a weak acid. So that would be possibly what we might look like after adding acid. In contrast, um, when I add a base, then I need to have the base be neutralized by the acids. Um, so those hydroxides are going to react with the acids, if you can remember, and that turned into these products on the last page. So when I add base, they're going to pull the H's off of these acids, and so my products might look something like this. With a little bit of acid left over. My weak bases have nothing to do to help with this strong base, so they just sit there. And then I would have a couple of waters that showed up in here, extra waters, um, and those waters would have the hydroxides in there. So you can see that when you add an acid, 
my weak base neutralized it, and when I added a base, then my weak acid neutralized it. At some point, you can reach a buffer capacity, and so you can imagine if I added a third hydroxide and then a fourth one, I would run out of um, acid to neutralize it. If I run out of buffer, then my pH is going to dramatically shoot up with the base or dramatically drop um, if I'm adding an acid. So I hope that helps you understand what's happening in a buffer a little bit. Um, part D we're not able to do, although I do kind of play around with mixing and matching chemicals at the end of the video. Um, and so your task um, today is going to be to um, fill in the observations and then answer can a buffer minimize pH changes. Make sure that you make a claim, conclusion, topic sentence um, to start this. And then in number two, you will look at when a huge amount of hydroxide was added to the buffer. Um, and that has a different impact than just a few drops of base. Um, so you will answer those and then you will scan pages as instructed by your um, professor and um, submit them like your professor tells you to. Have fun.